If you have any Ethereum or plan on getting some, you should be very excited. Hey there, I'm Maya for Block Finance. In today's video, we'll be talking about the Ethereum merge. As you may have heard, the merge has something to do with a change from proof of work to something called proof of stake. If you haven't heard, then here's a breakdown and why this is such a big deal. You see, proof of work is a particular method for securing blockchains, keeping them safe from manipulation. But in order for a proof of work blockchain to run like Fort Knox, the barrier must be high, which is to say, it must entail substantial economic costs. This plays out as an intense contest between warehouses of servers. Like a giant Rubik's Cube competition, computers work feverishly to solve difficult cryptographic puzzles and be the first one to verify a new block successfully. This procedure is referred to as mining. The amount of energy used to power the Bitcoin network's mining equipment exceeds that used by countries like the United Arab Emirates or Argentina. To many eco-conscious people, this is merely proof of waste. Proof of stake, like proof of work, aims to establish a single, agreed-upon account of activity on the blockchain. The difference is, participants called validators lock up set amounts of cryptocurrency or crypto tokens, their stake, as it were, in a smart contract on the blockchain. A reward is given in return for locking up their stake to validate new transactions. However, if the staker doesn't properly verify the blockchain, they might lose all or a portion of their investment. The merge is the Ethereum Steam attempt to resolve the substantial ecologically waste incurred by the proof-of-work consensus mechanism. Overall, the merge is being pursued by Ethereum's developers for two primary reasons. First and foremost, the price, because if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. Once the merge is complete, the rate at which Ethereum is brought onto the market is predicted to drop by 90%. This means that Ethereum will be scarcer in the face of steady or rising demand, thus creating the perfect conditions for higher valuations. Secondly, the amount of energy required for transaction validations will plummet. Some estimates foresee Ethereum transactions consuming 99.95% less energy following the merge. This means the merge will help ensure long-term viability for the Ethereum network. The improvements made by Ethereum's developers today will lead to long-term advantages and will allow the team to move on to the next stage of future-proofing the network. Without the merge, no post-merge improvements are possible. Unfortunately, the merge will have little to no effect on Ethereum gas prices. The reason for this is quite simple. More activity on the Ethereum blockchain equals higher fees. Reductions in transaction costs will supposedly take effect when short chains are implemented next year. These will make Ethereum more scalable and should reduce the congestion concerns that every Ethereum user is familiar with and pays dearly for. When will the merge take place and what are its chances of success? Ethereum's development team has optimistically slated the merge for some time in mid-September. That being said, the merge from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake is a long and notoriously complex process. Ethereum has a market cap of over $200 billion, and the livelihood of thousands of other projects depends on Ethereum's continued smooth functioning. The developers don't want any downtime which makes the merge significantly more complicated. It's like Indiana Jones swapping a bag of sand for a golden treasure sitting on a booby trap pedestal. It must be flawless. And if the merge has major undiscovered bugs, it could trigger a catastrophic eruption of money from crypto's most active network, prompting the onset of a crypto winter that will leave the house of Stark shuddering. When Ethereum started in 2015, it was practically a foregone conclusion that the network would adopt a proof-of-work consensus method, similar to Bitcoin and nearly all other cryptocurrencies at the time. 
But Vitalik and his Ethereum colleagues were not happy being forced to feed an increasingly demanding energy blob. Ethereum's creators understood they must ultimately switch to proof of stake. However, a major problem with switching to a new consensus method was that it needed the majority of miners to accept it and instead stake Ethereum instead. The engineers need an incentive mechanism to prevent a mutiny that may split one blockchain into two independent blockchains. So they created the difficulty bomb. But instead of strapping literal dynamite to Ethereum miners' rigs, the team have scheduled an event like a timer on a bomb that will limit the amount of Ethereum rewarded to miners and thereby destroy the mining's profitability. Whether miners like it or not, they'll be forced to cut the cord before the countdown reaches zero. While the network's last big update significantly reduced Ethereum inflation, post-merge the reduction in the supply of Ethereum will outpace the issuing of new Ethereum, thus making Ethereum's token practically deflationary. The positive price effects from deflation are expected by most crypto experts. However, misconceptions around over how the network will improve following the transition from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake. One common misperception is that after the merger, Ethereum will have a new coin. This is fake news. To coin a phrase, the Ethereum cryptocurrency itself will be completely unchanged. In fact, there's been so much confusion about a new coin that the Ethereum Foundation has provided instructions on how the merge should be referred to. Initially, the merge was known as Ethereum 2.0 or ETH2. However, the Ethereum Foundation and the blockchain's core developers stated that this labeling will be phased away because so many scammers were trying to convince people that there would be the new ETH2 token separate from ETH. Another popular misconception is that Ethereum transactions will become faster. To be fair, it's a little bit true. There is some speculation that the merge might lower the block time from 13 seconds to 12 seconds and possibly bump up the time it takes to finalize a transaction, which is certainly better than nothing. But you probably won't notice a difference. Admittedly, with all the hype around ETH 2.0, it's easy to think that the Ethereum network was about to become lightened and fast, or would finally stop making you cry every time you pay the gas fee. As mentioned early, many people think that the merge will result in decreased transaction fees for Ethereum. This is also sadly flat out wrong. With a planned update, Ethereum will transition to proof-of-stake, which will allow users to confirm transactions based on the number of coins they contribute or stake. Users who stake more coins have a better chance of being picked to validate transactions on the network and earn a reward. This switch over from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake will only happen at the consensus level, not the execution level. But those upgrades will come later, hopefully. In the meantime, by making Ethereum much more eco-friendly, the developers are pulling off something truly important for the long-term success of the network. So there you have it, the core of what the Ethereum merge is all about, why it matters and what's on the line should anything go wrong. If the merge succeeds, it will pave the way for Ethereum's next major upgrade sharding and represent a new stage of development in what's arguably the most useful blockchain in all of crypto. If you found this video informative or helpful, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can get more cutting-edge crypto news and analysis like this. Thanks for watching!